What the is going on on this team, Jerry? Bury him! Bury him! Jerry, TJ Watt, he is the best defensive player on the planet. Go! Yes! Yes! We're going to my Run it down their throat! No, 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 no! That's not a penalty! Game over! Game over! Don't ask me to do nothing! This is nothing! He's aggressive. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Steel Here podcast, where I'm your host, Kevin Adams, alongside my partner in crime jersey, Jerry. Jerry Don, do we have a quarterback controversy brewing in the city of Pittsburgh after being 1-0 and beating the Atlanta Falcons heading into week two against the Denver Broncos? I think we do. I think we do. I think if Justin Fields played bad, Russ plays week two. Yep. Without a doubt. Um, they're in a weird spot. This was this is the spot that I, I you know we both said on the podcast uh, a few weeks ago. Um, what do you like what happens now now? Like if Justin Fields is just like winning you games, defense is bailing you out, you're not scoring touchdown, but you're winning games, like what happens? Yeah. You know? Is Russ fully healthy? Probably not. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think we do. I think I think now, after hearing Tomlin's presser, we are going to see Fields uh, again. But he did leave the door open for Russie <laughs> just a little bit. He left it open. So we'll see. I mean, are you still riding on you prefer to see Russ play or now having had time to digest it? Did you get to go back and watch the game? How do, how do you feel now? Are you on Fields this week or are you still we should put Russ back in there? I would say if if. If I was the coach and real and and uh, Russ, he was said he was good to play. I would play him because at the end of the day, listen, did J Fields do some great things? Yes, he did. Did he make some really clutch throws? He did. Was he? Did he look good with his legs? He did. But um, I still think there's something missing. There's just something missing in that offense still. Whether. Listen, I don't know if Russ is going to give it to you, but the only way to find out is if you play him. Are they going to play him? It seems like they're probably not going to play him. Um, but, you know, what do you do now? You, you, Fields goes out there and he plays bad week two, and you lose the game. Do you go to Russ? And then what if Russ is bad? Do you go back to Fields again? So, I don't know. I feel like they're in a position now where – they're just going to stick with Fields, it seems like. I, I don't know what to make of it, Kev. Well, I really don't. Here, why wouldn't you just stick with Fields, though? Like, Because what you're saying is, okay, they go to Russ, but what if Russ kind of falls on his face? Or if he doesn't, if they don't get the touchdowns? Because at the end of the day, yeah. if Justin Fields scores even two touchdowns in that game and they add another eight points to the total and the Steelers score 26 points, what's our magic number, Jerry? What's our yeah. magic number? 27 points per game. That's yep. what every Super Bowl team needs to get to. If you want to win a Super Bowl, that's what you have to average, and we say it every year on this show so you get in the end zone twice and he scores 26 are you still sitting here then saying the offense is missing something they're missing something then or no, are you more no, on no. i'm all in with fields so it's the touchdowns that is the elephant in the room they just yeah. didn't score a touchdown yeah just didn't score a touchdown um stinks would love to see at least one go on the board there um but you know I'm not, I'm never going to complain being one and zero. I'm never going to complain about a win. You know what I mean? I think they, which was a very important win to open up the season. Oh, a hundred percent. I I think you continue like I said when we recorded Sunday after the game. I think you continue to roll with Fields because I I just rewatched the game right before we recorded. Jerry he made some throws. Now his numbers were they overall incredible? He had two incompletions on the first series. However, he finished the game 17 to 23, 156, and uh, rushing he had 14 carries for 57 yards. So he accounted for 213 total yards of offense. And a lot of people would combat and come back and say, well, that looks like some Kenny Pickett stats and you guys wanted to run Kenny Pickett out of town, which I agree with. I wanted touchdowns. I wanted higher numbers. However, I think the big difference maker for me is the way that he pushed the ball downfield. This guy, yeah. he, Jerry, he has arm talent. He flashes arm talent. Yeah. That pass at the end of the first half to George Pickens to get them in field goal range, he rolls to the left, throws back to the right side it's a it's a it's a laser it's an absolute rocket that no, i just don't know kenny pickett had the arm talent to do those kinds of things you can see the difference in the types of quarterback play you know between justin fields and kenny pickett 
he protected the ball. So if he's going to do that, Jerry, and he has more upside and he's better with his legs, I think we both would agree Justin Fields is better. Oh, 100%, 100%. Especially over Russ. So if he's better than Russ with his legs, what does Russ bring you? Just, you know, better understanding of the offense. Uh, maybe the offense is built for Russ, you know, for what they want it to end up being. But I, I don't I don't want to flop to Russ. They win this game, yes, but the, just the touchdowns don't come. I think they win this game no matter who starts, to be honest with you. I do too. I, I think it's a game where it doesn't really matter the spread is a little bit weird which we will get to um later on in the show two and a half point favorite i feel like it should be a little bit higher than that but maybe the no touchdowns um week one is affecting that spread but i i agree it doesn't matter who you start i think this is a win for the pittsburgh steelers um that defense man i they have a chance they really have a chance from what i saw week one now listen the Falcons coming into the year, they were on everybody's list. This is the sleeper team. This is going to be a high-powered offense, good defense uh, to go along with it. Brand new offensive coordinator, new coach. They didn't look good. Mm-mm. And was that because they just haven't gelled together and it's week one? Or was it because the Steelers' defense is just that good? I think it's because a little bit of both. I'd lean Great. even more toward the Steelers' defense being that good. Um, they have a chance. They have a real chance of being the best Steelers defense we've seen in the last decade. Jerry, why why was the narrative before the game that oh this is a this doesn't look like it's going to be a good game for the Steelers? That Vegas had them as underdogs in this game, pretty sizable underdogs. If we're oh, being yeah, honest, yeah, you're yeah. going into Atlanta. Nobody believed in the Steelers, and then suddenly the Steelers win, and everyone's like, oh, it's not that impressive. It was the Falcons, you know. Oh, it, that's funny how the narratives shift. However, Surely. if the Steelers would have lost that game, it would have been. And, well, yeah, the Falcons are a good team. I'm t- this is bullshit. They went into yeah. a hostile environment week one with a reloaded offense. You know, a team that's pretty decent, you would think. Paid Kirk Cousins all the money. They have weapons across the board at tight end, at wide receiver, at running back. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, their defense beat the shit out of them. But let's let's oh, yeah. look at the stats of the game, Jerry. The Steelers had 270 yards. The Falcons had 226. I would like to see that number get around 300 to 350. I think that is a very good number if the Steelers can get to 300, 350. 50. That's yeah. that's pretty good yardage. Uh, we had 133 passing yards to 137 rushing yards. They we knew that they would be a run first team, and they came out and they ran the ball well. Now, granted, a lot of those yards came from Fields' legs. However, however you advance the ball is all I give a shit about. Whether in exactly. today's NFL, if the quarterback is the one rushing the ball, I'm fine with it. The Falcons had 137 passing yards and only 80 89 rushing yards. The big statistic, Jerry, Steelers went eight of 17 on third down. The Falcons went two of nine. In years yeah. past, what was our Achilles heel on defense? Third down. Couldn't get off the third fucking down. field on third downs. Two and nine, yep. Jerry, two and nine on third down. That's a special stat, man. That is dominance as far as third down goes, both on our end, almost 50%, yeah. and on the defensive end. We got to clean up the penalties, though. We had and, not- and you know what? 100%. I don't want to cut you off, Kev, but I, 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 I don't want to miss this point. Yeah. You know what? I, you know, I, I've realized it throughout the years, but now I'm starting to really realize it. Tomlin is a great coach after halftime. He is a really, really good coach after halftime. He really is. It seems like the Steelers, they make those halftime adjustments and it's curtains for the other team, uh, you know, especially when the other team's on offense. You know what I mean? So I mean, we, I are, bipolar. That. we are bipolar when it comes to Mike Tomlin, Jerry Don. Yeah. I agree you know, with you, you see, though. You see it more and more each year. And, like, this is where I'm starting to figure out, like, man, the second half of games, I mean, their defense just takes over. Something I want to to make a point off of, in the first half, they were getting beat both on the run game and screens. Where where the Falcons had their best their best movement were on screens. Bijan Robinson getting them out in space, screen game. Mm. Second half, the Falcons ran three screens. They didn't complete one of them. You know, didn't di- didn't gash us on any of them. In the first half, Bijan was beating us on the edge. He was gashing us. So that I would say, yes, they realized that the Falcons are going to try and beat us through screen game. And in the second half, they couldn't convert any of them. So yeah, that does come back to coaching. As much as we beat that guy's ass, it's Sometimes you got to give him his flowers. And in this second half, the defense really started to to square up on the things that they were losing to in the first half. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I absolutely agree with you. Would you say 
you know, given that we didn't have any touchdowns and it was just 156 passing yards for for Justin Fields, is that the type of game that you would compare to a Kenny Pickett game and the Steelers won that way? Or do you feel like you saw something a little bit different than we normally would have seen in years past out of Kenny Pickett? I'm going to go with an answer that, you know, is kind of controversial. Um, I think it was a little bit of both. I think it was a little bit of both. Um, as far as the no touchdowns on offense, we've seen that plenty the last few years. What we haven't seen the last few few years is the Steelers' uh, ability con- to convert on third down and the Steelers' ability at the quarterback position to, hey, if nothing's there, we're going to take off and run and we're going to get the first down that way. So we haven't seen that the last few years. I like that part of it. Yep. I also liked – third and short um you know even fourth fourth and short i know we didn't get that first down but justin field's ability to go make a play balls in his hands run for the first down i love that and you know did they push the ball downfield a lot no but We've shown that they can throw the ball deep. And that to me is big because it's going to circle to George Pickens. But the one last major thing that I want to say on why I don't feel as though it was more of a Kenny Pickett game, you know, and and I feel like this season was different versus seasons in the past. Time of possession. Time of possession, Jerry, we dominated them 35 minutes to 25 minutes. I mean, especially in the fourth quarter as well. I think we had the ball for 11 minutes, maybe. You suck the life out of the game. And that's where, especially late in the game, the offensive line started to take over. You started to have bigger holes running the ball. Najee looked good closing it out as far as those things were concerned. Cordero Patterson looked good closing out the fourth quarter. So you get 35 minutes to 25 minutes in time of possession. Your defense has plenty of time to rest. In years past, we've had so many three and outs the defense it felt like is always on the field so you're you're laboring tj late in the game cam is old and and gas late in the game you didn't see any of those things in fact the defense felt like they got stronger as the game was coming to a close and so i think a lot of that comes down to we're beating the shit out of them the defense is fresh and the defense is gonna be faster than the offense that they're playing towards the end of the game it's just when they get a chance to pin their ears back that is when the pittsburgh steelers are lethal so we get a lead into the fourth quarter i'm confident in us being able to close it out my only concern is you go into a game where you don't have a lead maybe you're down late in the fourth quarter are we gonna have the ability to follow the same script the same game plan run first or does fields have what it takes to win the game with his arm and so he didn't have to win the game with his arm but i saw enough to to want to say i want to see if he can do it yeah well here's another take kev did arthur smith keep the game plan Pretty simple for Fields because it was week one. Right. Are we going to see week two him open it up a little bit more? I think we are. Yep. So that could have been another, um, you know, point where, you know, a lot of people aren't really talking about. Maybe he did keep it simple. Maybe they said, hey, listen, Fields is a starter. We'll keep it simple. Yep. We know we're going to play great defense and we're not going to try to do anything crazy, which they didn't. We don't need to throw the ball deep the whole game we're going to win this game with defense and uh that's kind of what they did in a way so i expect uh more passing yards i do week two a little matchup i'm a little concerned about is this going into week two and let's talk about this george pickens all the talent in the world yep no denying that he has possibly his toughest matchup of the year Mm -hmm. this week against patrick sertan who is a lockdown corner is georgie gonna eat I don't know. Um, And if he doesn't, if Sertan has him locked up, which that probably might be the case because he's so good, what are you going to do? Because Van Jefferson didn't look good. Calvin Austin didn't look good. Fryermuth had a few catches, you know, here and there. Um, What are they going to do? Those guys are going to have to step up. Is Roman Wilson going to see the field? Probably not. I don't know. But you're going to have to have some guys step up week two because – If they take George Pickens away, that is a recipe for disaster going into week two if these guys aren't going to contribute. 100%. Coming back to George Pickens, though, Jerry, we were worried he might not be able to produce against the Falcons. I mean, our biggest fear— AJ Terrell, yeah. AJ Terrell's a damn good cornerback. He's not a slouch. He's not a bum, dude. He's a pretty damn good cornerback. Sertan is a step up in class, though. I would agree. I would agree. However, what I am going to say is what you look at out of George Pickens, six catches, 85 yards, and he should have had 123 yards if he doesn't get called on the ticky-tack push-off. 123 
yards on seven catches out of George Pickens when we said he would get doubled into oblivion this season. He wouldn't have yeah. a chance. He's not going to produce. For him to come out and have the type of game that he did, it it doesn't put all of my my fears about the wide receiver position to, to rest because you really didn't see anybody else catching the ball at the wide receiver spot. They tried no. a little bit with Calvin Austin. They tried a little bit with Van Jefferson. It's a couple plays to Muth where you're going to get Justin Fields rolling out to one side or the other and find Muth in space. But we don't still have anybody else. I really, <clears throat> really am hoping that you see Roman Wilson soon just as someone else that's a threat across the middle of the field. Because if you saw the passing chart again this week, the same we saw it last year and the year before and seasons with Ben, they don't use the middle of that field. Yeah. It looks like a yeah. U, the middle of the field just being <laughs> wide open. We don't throw any balls there. I think if the Steelers really want to take a step forward as far as an offense is going to be concerned this year, we have to start attacking the middle of that field and we need a receiver that can do it. George Pickens is an outside the numbers type of wide receiver yes, in my opinion. 100%. So yes, he played fucking great. I, I honestly, it shut me up a little bit on whether or not they could, he could produce at all. Uh, I just think that's a testament to how much talent George Pickens actually has, but we need another option at the wide receiver position and it has to be starting to use the middle of the field. No, 100%. That's that's my biggest concern going into week two is what are you going to do if they take him away? What are you – because the, the Broncos' D-line isn't terrible. No. They're really not terrible. Um, linebackers are pretty decent on the Broncos too. What happens if you – hey, you're not having success, run the ball, and then they take Pickens away. These guys got to step up. Yep. I mean, last week was not a good performance from – people outside of George Pickens and Najee Harris, really, honestly. Um, also, Warren, let's talk about that. He really – wait, was he on a snap count? Did he – you know, he didn't get the ball much. Were they just like, hey, Najee's working out, so we're going to keep him in? I don't know what the case may be, but – they really didn't need to use Warren much last week. No, and I I would prefer if they don't need to use Warren for a few weeks and just let yes. that hamstring get where it needs to get to. Jalen Warren is going to become someone for us that we absolutely need towards the middle of the season. There's no doubt about it. You will need to lean on Jalen Warren. His skill set is just, it's, it's too good for what we do to not have to use him. But if you can get a win, a couple of wins out of the way early in the year and you don't have to use him a whole lot and you give him some time to let that hamstring get to 100%, I love that idea. They did lean on Cordero Patterson a little more than I thought that they would. But again, it's probably because of the injury. So I don't have any concerns that we didn't see a ton out of Jalen Warren. Najee had 20 carries, 70 yards. Hard to hate that. You know, 3.5 yeah. yards per carry. Najee, we, I think we need to accept Najee's never going to be the five yards per carry, four and a half yards per carry. That's just, yeah. he doesn't have the speed. I don't think that's the type of back he is going to be in his career. It's okay because you can, as long as you play well on third down, what Najee Harris gives you on first and second, Second down, three yards here. He rarely gets tackled in the backfield. You don't yes. you don't really have to worry that Najee Harris is not going to gain you some sort of yards or that he's going to kill you. You just need to convert your third downs. That's why I thought the game plan Sunday was great out of Arthur Smith. Yeah, no, I do too. And another thing you didn't see Najee Harris do, which he did, uh, you know, some last year and a lot the year before, uh, especially in the beginning of the year, is there's no dancing really in the backfield. Agreed. He's hitting the hole, yep. and he's taking what the defense gives him, getting extra yards, diving, moving forward. He had a couple really good runs, which I was happy with. Yep. So as long as he stays healthy, man, Najee Harris is a damn good running back. I'm not going to say he's a great running back because I don't think there are many great, great running backs in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he's doing everything he can. You know, he, he's getting he's getting hit. He's breaking tackles. That one hit he put on in the beginning of the game to A.J. Terrell, he <laughs> yeah, bullied him. Yeah. It was awesome to see. So, listen, Najee shown last three years, uh, 1,000 yards each year, yep. which I love. Um, I think he's due for another 1,000-yard rushing season. I'm excited for him. I think sky's the limit this year with this running game. I do. Offensive line looked good. Who's going to start at right tackle, left tackle? I'm not sure the Steelers even know at this point, but we'll see. I didn't think Broderick Jones played that bad. Watching it back, I didn't think he played no, that bad. No, he didn't. Somebody did on that line that I do want to highlight, Jerry, let's go to some of the players that, that actually stood out when you watched the game. Zach Frazier, Jerry, it, that center yep. is an absolute dog. He's a mon Jerry. He's a monster. I don't know if you saw the highlight package that uh, somebody broke down and put on there uh, I on Twitter. 
he finishes blocks. He looks, he looks for a block. Like he's looking to help. Even if there's nobody there, he wants to beat the shit out of somebody. He finishes his blocks out. He knows the angles to take and the positions to get into to, to, he understands the concepts of zone blocking, how you have to scheme it, where you have to be in order for that running back to have the lane that's supposed to be there. For his first start, I could not be happier that that guy is a Pittsburgh Steeler. We finally, after years of, of flipping stones and going through shitty Mason Coles and shitty, you know, Kendrick Greens, you finally have a guy that I think you can hang your hat on for a decade in Zach Frazier. He looked damn good. Watching it back, he's making checks at the line of scrimmage. He's making calls for fields. He already knows the things he's supposed to be looking for. I couldn't love that more as far as helping Justin Fields with some of the protections. Oh, I agree. And I also think the Steelers did a great job with using all three tight ends. Yep. Um, you know, Darnell Washington, very good blocking game from him. Mm-hmm. Really good. Seen a specific play on, I think it was Judon. It was. Just, bu- just bullied him, man. Yep. Just, I mean, that guy is so big, so strong. You know, I think you're going to see a lot of him this year uh, blocking. And I think he did. Uh, did he end up catching a pass? I want to say he caught one in the first half. Yeah, I think he caught one, which was which was good, you know, close to a first down. I don't know if he got a first down, but hey, if you can get that kind of game from Darnell Washington and then the line plays good, the Steelers should be able to run the ball effectively, which they did uh, last week. Um, not too much from the other tight ends. Uh, Pat had a few catches. I was hoping he would get some more touches. Um, but uh, the other guy, uh, Pruitt? Yeah, Mecole Pruitt. Yeah, Pruitt, he had uh, one or two catches, I believe. I'm not sure exactly how many, but that was nice to see. He seems like a really good blocker, though. Yep. I thought Darnell Washington agreed. I think he played great, Jerry. When you saw him line up, the play that Jerry's talking about, it was left side. He basically lined up outside of of Dan Moore Jr. And Judon, he just locks him up. I mean, Dan, there was nothing for for Matthew Judon to do. Darnell Washington just locked him up, bullied him, stoned him right at the line. He looked like the left tackle, if we're being honest about it that that guy I think has a a very special role for the Steelers as far as what they're trying to accomplish from a run game perspective and to see him settling in in year two that's going to be something you keep an eye on because he could make a difference as far as blocking is concerned Deshaun Elliott Jerry first game as a Steeler alongside Mika Fitzpatrick I thought Deshaun Elliott had a fucking great game yeah always around the ball man always around the ball has the pick no he looked great I mean looked really good um I wasn't really sure what to expect, but now I have high hopes for him. Uh, after after the game, his presser was great. Um, I thought he played a really, really solid game. Seemed like another one of those guys, kind of like, um, what's his face? Uh, Payne Wilson. Gets his hands on you. It seems like you're going to go down. So yep. he showed the ability to tackle, uh, which, I, which I love to see. Joey Porter, on the other hand, didn't have the best tackling game. Uh, pretty much locked up Drake London, though. I will say that. He did lock him I, up. I will say that. He locked did. him up, put him on an island. Missed a few tackles, but, you know, I expect that from cornerbacks. I, you know, I expect him to miss, you know, a tackle or two a game, you know. But uh, he looked really good. Beanie Bishop, to me, was like, Played a pretty good game. I know he's getting a lot of shit for that touchdown, but, dude, it's the NFL. Right. You know, he, he, uh, he's undrafted. I mean, he, he's going to give up some plays here and there. You know, right. you got to expect that. But other than that, he played pretty pretty good. His tackling was great. Yeah, I think he's a good tackler. And uh, yeah. an, another thing that you had mentioned uh, last episode when we recorded, that you didn't love Calvin Austin's punt returns. And watching it back, I liked Calvin Austin's punt returns. I honestly thought he showed some some spark. I thought that maybe there, he has the potential to, to, to possibly break one. Is he Was he electric in the uh, receiving game? No. I just don't know that that guy's going to be a great receiver. I just, I'm afraid he's too small. I, I really, I've, I've thought this for a while. I don't know that he's going to be the type of slot wide receiver that they want him to be. That's why we really want to see Roman Wilson get healthy. But from a punt returning standpoint, I thought he played pretty decent as far as that was stuff was concerned. And somebody I want to shine a little light on is cam hayward we yes. have said in years past that his contract is bloated i don't know that i want to pay him 23 24 million dollars he's a little long in the tooth as much as i love respect cam hayward and i think he's a great pittsburgh Steeler, both on and off the field walter payton man of the year can't give the guy enough respect as far as who he is as a human being i had worried that maybe his game was going to start to tail off he played great jerry he controlled the line of scrimmage on the on the defensive line from a, a run run standpoint uh you 
you know, he got in there. He had the, uh, I want to say he had half a sack or he was least in there with Montrevious Adams on the sack of yeah. Kirk Cousins. So, you know, for, for that contract, three years at $45 million, you're only giving the guy $15 million and only guaranteeing him this season. I, I start to really think that that was a pretty damn good contract. And his game translates because he is big and strong and he's not relying on just speed. So his game does have the ability to translate. I was happy with what we saw to Cam Hayward in week one. 100%. I was very pleased what we saw to him. Now the goal is for him is we got to stay healthy. Yes. We got to stay healthy. Yes. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more Keanu Benton. We didn't get to see him much. Um, he played, don't get me wrong, but I thought he was going to be on the field a lot more than he was. I mean, I could be mistaken, but it, it seemed like it was a lot of La- Larry O. Um, which he, he, I'm not saying he played bad. He didn't. No, um, Larry played pretty good. Larry played pretty good. He played he played pretty good, especially in the first half, you know. Um, but, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I would like to see Keanu Benton more, a little bit more, just because I feel like he has so much upside. Um, and it gives the ability to give Cam Hayward. We want him to stay healthy, right? Right. So it gives them the ability to take Cam off the field, you know, some plays or maybe one drive and get Keanu Benton in there full time, you know, in that drive. But, hey, I'm not going to complain about being 1-0. I don't want to nitpick a, a, a bunch of, I'm excited for this year. There is a lot of work to do, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. So we'll see what happens. Let's look at some uh, some injury updates here. So they put uh, Cam Johnston on IR. He's done for the year with his knee. You know, that was Big the loss. fear. That's a, that is that sucks. That really does suck. They add Corliss Waitman though, so we don't go back to Presley Harvin. Yes. Jerry, Thank God. That Thank is God. A, that also, is a sign of got, changing times for me, though, yes. because it would have been so easy for the Steelers to do the shit that they have done for so many years in the past. You lose a guy early in the season, you bring back a scrub that you had years before. So how do you ever get better when you're constantly going backwards like that? Corliss Waitman had a s- small stint with the Steelers a few years ago. They bring him back this year. I'm good with Corliss Waitman, Jerry. I, he's, he's not Cam Johnson, but he's also not Presley Harvin either. Yeah, no, he's got a big leg, too. Agree. He's got a big I, leg. I, I so like that. that. Yeah, I, 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 I'd, I'd rather that, you know, um, you know, over, over a guy like Presley Arvin, who, you know, he, he was bad. He was really bad. It really sucks that injury, man. With, with, um, you know, uh, oh my God, I'm drawing Cam Johnson. Jesus Christ. Cam, yeah, Cam Johnson. Um, and then we got called for a holding on that play, did we not? Yeah. I believe. Yes, they run into him immediately. So that was in the the end zone. I was in the end zone in Atlanta. That was in the end zone where you see him get hit and the flag comes out. I'm like, oh my god! But while the ball is still in the air, Jerry, he's clinching his knee and he's literally waving for help. So I knew it was yeah. terrible. And then they call a penalty on the Steelers when this guy very blatantly just blows into his yeah. leg. The officiating. Yeah, the last thing I'll say about that Falcons game. The officiating. Watching it back was. Was absolutely horrendous. That oh, was, yeah, was Jerry. He timed the snap perfectly. The TJ yeah. Watt strip sack. So we say the Beanie Bishop, he gives up that touchdown, you know, and it, it is what it is. However, it shouldn't have even gotten there. The play before you strip sack him, they shouldn't have even had that touchdown on the board because TJ Watt, unfortunately, he was so fast. And I don't know if you heard some of the things that he said. He said he found some nuggets in watching film, something yeah, that gave exactly, him an edge, yeah. like an edge to where yeah. he knew to time the snap perfectly. And so he got punished because he was so fucking good. TJ Watt got yeah. punished because he played the ball so perfectly. I know. And what the problem is with the NFL is this, like, Hey, you want to find these players for, you know, wearing different color cleats and doing this and unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. You should fucking find referees yeah. for missing calls like that. You really should. Yep. And especially when the ref comes out after halftime and goes up to TJ and says, Hey, you know, my bad, bro. You were right. I missed a call. That's on me. No, fuck you, bro. You should get fined for that. Agreed. You really should. It's fucking bullshit, dude. It really is. And those type of plays change games. Oh, what yeah. happens in, if the fourth quarter comes around, Falcons go, they score, score a touchdown late, we, 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 we end up losing the game. Who knows? But, like, those are type of plays in the game that can have an effect 
on the on the whole entire game. Good thing we won the game. You know why it pisses me off NFL officiating is because it could very easily be fixed in those types of situations. On plays where you can have a definitive answer of whether or not TJ Watt was offsides or not, be able to challenge it. Or, you know what, if it's that close, why not take a fucking look at it? Because if they took a look at it, you could very visibly see he was not offsides. He just timed the snap perfectly. And then the play stands as the strip sack. If the league truly, truly wanted to take the game out of the hands of the officials, they have the ability to do it. Would it slow it down 20, 30 minutes? Yeah, maybe. It wouldn't bother me if you're getting the calls right, though. Wouldn't, wouldn't bother me at all. No, get the shit right. It, 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 it it fucks with the integrity of the game whenever you're not getting calls like that, that then after the fact, officials go and they tell TJ, hey, we messed that one up. When you're doing that, it pisses me off because if it's that easy for them to go into halftime and see that they made the wrong call, how long would it have really taken if you have someone in the booth that reviews it for a minute, a minute, a half, if they delay the game a minute and a half just to see, how hard would it be for them to say, okay, yeah, you're right, he wasn't off sides, pick up the flag, Steelers ball. You know, they have the exactly. ability to fix those things and they don't. Don't. So that's why I'll always harp on officiating until the NFL really takes a step forward in admitting that they have an officiating problem. 100%. No, I couldn't agree more. It's fucking bullshit, Ken. Let's look at the, the Broncos game. That's uh, Anything else you want to add to the Falcons game before we close that out? No, no. We had the, the preview, and then we had the um, uh, recap of the game. So I think we're all good there. Okay, Broncos. They lose their first game of the season to the Fal or to the Seahawks, rather, 26-20. Rookie Bo Nix at quarterback went 26 of 42 for 138 yards and two interceptions. The Broncos had three turnovers and they gave up two sacks. I think that there is gun to my head, Jerry, and my life is on the line. I think the Steelers beat the shit out of them this weekend. But Bo Nix especially. They're coming in there hot off of beating the Falcons. The defense, you know TJ's going to be pissed because he should have had at least two sacks, possibly three. I think that our pass rush can beat beat their ass on Sunday. I don't think Bo Nix wants to play this game at all this early in his career. I, 26 of 42 for 138 yards, Jerry. That is, those yes, are crazy. bad numbers. He's throwing the ball two yards downfield. Yeah, I know. I agree. And usually I would say in a game like this, you know, uh, well, this these are the Tomlin letdown games, and we've seen it a bunch, you know, over the last few years. But I think this is a different team. I think is this is a di differently coached team as well. Yep. Um, and I think this, this is the most talent the Steelers have had on a roster in a very long time. I agree. And I think it is the best defense they will have in the last decade. I really do. I believe that. This this game is I didn't this, this is what scares me about the game and I touched on it earlier is that is that line I, I know you're going into Denver and I know it's a tough place to play but rookie quarterback against a Steelers defense who shut the Vikings uh, the um, Falcons down who were, you know was supposed to be a high powered offense shut them down they're going against a rookie quarterback I feel like that line should be like Steelers minus four and a half Steelers minus five and a half. It's at minus two and a half right now, which is crazy, which scares me. Is it a trap? I don't know. I'm going to, you know, I, I believe the Steelers do beat the shit out of this team, and they should. Mm -hmm. And it's necessary to do that. Uh, you know, and it helps build the the confidence against uh, with, with your whole team. By by w when is the last time we, we've watched the Steelers game and start to finish, we, we just knew this is a bl this is a blowout. Right. This is a blowout. They're going to beat the shit out of We haven't seen it in such a long time, and they need to do a better job uh, of that this year, and I hope we get that week two. Oh, 100%. And another reason I think this game, it's, it's week two, so it's not a must win, but this is like, Jerry, a stat for you. Teams that start 2-0 and since 1990 make the playoff 73% of the time. Wow. No, that's a great stat. That's a great 73 percent of the time. That's three out of four. Basically, Jerry, we if we end up winning on Sunday and you start two and oh, that puts us especially look who look who the Bengals play this weekend. The Chiefs, you yeah. know, and and the, the Ravens should get a win. They play a shitty team. The the Browns, I can't remember who they're playing, but they have a hard game. Could very I think the Browns have a tough game. I think yeah, they Jags do. maybe. Yeah, it is Jags. They have a they have a tough game tough there game. And, and Joku's out. So you're looking at the 
Steelers, if they can get to 2-0, and they're at least going to be one game up on the Ravens, you would think. Could possibly be two games up on a team like the Bengals. After two weeks, I mean, that's that's pretty fucking good start to the season, if you're asking me, Jerry. So this game on Sunday is is pretty important, even though it's it's just week two. To get to 2-0 and would be massive for the Steelers. I just, I don't see them losing. I would agree with you. At 2.5, right now, FanDuel has the line at 3, just before we recorded. DraftKings, 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 DraftKings. Dra- yes, DraftKings. DraftKings has a line. That's what it is. Two and a half, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Two and a half, right? So, well, I've seen it at three, but yes, two and a half even. Let's get into, let's just get into the betting then. Uh, Steelers Mm -hmm. win. Do your prediction on the game. Let's do Steelers Broncos. What's your prediction as far as score is concerned? Okay. My score prediction for this game is the Steelers 27 points. The Broncos 17. 27-17. Twenty-seven, seventeen. That would. I think it's a twenty-seven, seventeen game. That would put the over under at what thirty-four. Uh, the Steelers would cover the spread at that point. I'm going to say the Steelers win this game. Twenty-four, thirteen. Twenty-four, thirteen. I think is what the Steelers would end up getting. That's forty-four, actually. So you mm-hmm. would you would have had the over under this week is thirty-six and a half. The Steelers are between two and a half and three. What is your bet of the week this week? To recap last week, Jerry Don won one and zero. He had Najee over fifty rushing yards. I had the score total over forty-two and a half. So I am zero and one. Jerry is up one game to nil on the season this week. Steelers getting uh, have to cover three. Over under is thirty-six and a half. What is your bet of the week this week, Jerry Don? Ooh, man, tough. My bet of the week this week is the Pittsburgh Steelers over, hear me out, over 17 and a half points. The line on that is minus 130. So I'm betting the Steelers to have over 17 and a half points. That's how this low week. That's it my is? Bet of the week. Yeah, well, um, it's pretty much the same. It's the the real line is okay. I'll give it to you like this because I actually do believe in in this team. Um, let's just do it. Let's just so we have pretty fair odds. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll do over nineteen and a half because that's even money. Okay, so let's either do even money or more. Yeah, always you know, has to be even money or worse money. or over. Yes, that's that's fair. I I like that. Okay. Um, okay, so 19 and a half. That's my line. Over. I am going to take the Steelers to cover three and a half. I'm going to take them to cover three and a half. So that gets it to, if you're saying, that is what's what's the line at three and a half? What do you get the line at at three and a half? Uh, so, no, actually, Kev, you're in a better spot. You can, you can get it at two and a half right now. And that's even money? Even money, pretty much. Oh, you just have the 112, minus 112. So that's pretty much even. Yeah, then, yeah, I'll take that. I'll take the Steelers to cover two and a half this week. I think that's a, a disrespectful line, unless we're missing something. I, even if it is Fields that goes out there, or if it's Russ, I think if it is Russ, he has something to prove. I think he's going to play his ass off. I think Fields can set a win. The Broncos really aren't going to be a good football team this year. The defense should beat up on Bo Nix. We know how Tomlin can beat up on rookie quarterbacks. Last season, you had some letdowns. We did lose to some bad teams towards the middle of the year some rookie quarterbacks however people are trying to tell me that the Steelers don't play well on the west coast and that they don't travel to the west coast well however they must forget last season we beat the Raiders in Vegas we beat Seattle late in the season and we went to LA and beat the Rams so I I think we get as fans we get trapped in this bubble where we only remember shit from like three four seasons ago and we automatically apply it to every year where you know you even said it you feel like this team is different so do I they they just look different in Atlanta they weren't sluggish at all on either side of the ball they looked ready to go week one and it could be the coaching staff you know Tomlin is the only guy that's still there other than Danny Smith as a special team's special teams coach they've they've changed coaches at wide receiver position offensive coordinator you have Terrell Austin who is settling in with the defense which we know is mostly coached by Tomlin on game days so for them to be as prepared as they were in that game I would agree with you I think that they come out on Sunday they beat the shit out of the Broncos and two and a half is is a is a disrespectful line in my opinion Oh, I, I, I would agree with you, dude. I think it's a very disrespectful line. Maybe Vegas just says, like, hey, I, we don't believe in the Steelers' offense. We just think they're the same offense, you know, as last year. But I hope that changes. What would you put the percentage at of Russell Russell Wilson starting this game? 
Very low, maybe twenty percent, fifteen percent, somewhere yeah. around there. When yes. you heard Tom okay. come out yesterday in his in his interview, and he said uh, <clears throat> that they said he said he'll leave the light on for him. Okay, great. He says that kind of stuff all the time. We'll leave the light on for him. However, someone asked him if Russell is healthy on Sunday, will he get the starting job back? And he made a very interesting response. He said, "That's a very big if." So for him to say that is a very big if, I am mm-hmm. pretty confident that they're going to roll Justin Fields back out there. I w- at yeah, this point, I would, I would be I would shocked, agree. to be honest with you. I, yeah, I, I would agree. I think I think Fields is the starter. Jerry, if he plays well, though, he's the starter then. Can we agree on that? If Fields goes out there and he plays well on Sunday in Denver, they're not going to Russ Week 3 coming home. When, when, when is Russ going to get back in there if he does not start on Sunday? When is he getting back in there? He'll get back in there if Fields plays bad. Exactly. That there is a chance that unless Fields really shits the bed or he has an injury, that you don't see Russell Wilson. And how is yeah, Russ going to behave as a teammate then, Jerry? And, and I'll say this: if Fields goes out and he puts up another one, let's say he puts an, up an identical game, pretty much um, to last week, I think they go to. I think Russ. I think Russ starts home opener. I, I do. I think that there's regardless a higher chance, of a win, yes. and that's regardless of a win. I I think they would go to Russ week three. It, it's gonna, we're going to need to see touchdowns. I think that's where they're yeah. going to be. They're going to need to see touchdowns. And here's the thing: they can say, "Hold on, we'll hold Russ out one more week. Let that let that calf get healthy one more week. Going into next week against uh, the the Chargers at the home opener, but it also gives them the ability to see fields. Then, so they can say they're just playing this injury thing, but I think they're playing it to their advantage. I think they want to yeah. see fields get one more go at it here whole week of practice as the starter can he get in the end zone and finish the game out and then they can play the whole well he's the better quarterback right now we're gonna ride the hot hand because what does Tomlin love to say you don't lose your job to injury however last year did Kenny Pickett lose his job to Mason Rudolph to injury (laughs) so I mean if he plays well Jerry if he plays well well, I, I will be shocked I will be shocked if Justin Fields plays well and they go back to Russell Wilson in week three yeah, no, I'd be sure if he plays well, I don't think they do. If he has pretty much an identical game or worse, I think they go to the Russell Wilson. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. <clears throat> we appreciate the shit out of you guys. Uh, that was our first reactions episode, Jerry. It did well. I don't know if you read the YouTube comments, but the people loved it. Yeah, I did. People loved it. It was that was good. I think that's that's going to be good for us. You get it. You get it. A raw reaction out of us on on game day. Uh, we have time. I had time to finally digest and look at some things. And and I think that this is a good football team. I'm excited to do the reactions episode because that's Jerry and I in our truest form. Uh, that is when you're going to get real honest answers out of what we thought the game looked like. Uh, but we appreciate the hell out of you guys supporting it. Continue to like, comment, subscribe. Get let's get the subscriber numbers up, Jerry Don. We get the subscriptions. Yeah, let's get it up. I think we're at six. 16,000 now, it's right? It's at 164. So when we started this show, I think we were at like 4,000 or something like that. So we've gained several thousand, 12,000 some subscriptions in the last two yeah. years. If we get this subscriptions up to 20,000, Jerry Don, I will give one listener $1,000. One listener $1,000. Oh, wow. The day we get the subscriptions up, up to 20,000 subscriptions, $1,000 going to one of our listeners. So, hey, I got news. I'll match. Oh, two grand, two grand going out. As soon as we get to 20,000 subscribers, $2,000 coming from Jerry and I do it. Run it up there, guys. Spread the word. Tell your friends. We love it. We appreciate the shit out of you guys. We'll see you here next week. Are you, Kev, real quick, are you going to Denver? I will be in Denver. Yes, I will be in Denver. So I'm going to tweet where I'm going to be. Uh, I'm not going to have an official terrible tailgate just because it's so far from home. It's kind of hard to pull it off. But I am going to have a few parking spaces in Lot C. Uh, I'm inviting everybody that's going to be there. I'm going to tweet out the information. You guys can come. Let's meet up. Let's have a few beers. And uh, let's celebrate the Pittsburgh Steelers being 2-0, baby. All right, we'll be back uh, after the game on Sunday. Yep, and that's the other thing. Let's touch base on that, actually. We're going to record Sunday uh, pretty much right after the game around 7, 7.30, and then— Yeah, how are you—wait, it's an, it's, a, it's, a, it's an afternoon game. It's a—what time's the game for us? It's 4.15 for us, technically, or 3.15 yeah, or something cool. like that. Yeah, so how's that going to work? What time's your flight? So my flight is not until midnight. I'm taking the red eye home. So my flight is not until midnight. Oh. So I'll have like five hour window after the game until oh. I have to leave. Okay, so you're going to record from the hotel room. Yeah, I'm going to record from the hotel. Yep. I'm going to record okay, so at the let's hotel. Do that. Let's plan on after the game, give you like an hour to go back to your hotel and then we'll record. 
this way, you know, we're both available for the Sunday night game. Yep. And then Nick should have the ability to get that episode out. We should have those episodes out on Mondays by noon at the latest, but we're shooting for between 7 and 10 a.m. So that's something you guys can plan on. And then moving forward, we'll record on Wednesdays. We'll release that next episode on Thursday mornings. We appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you again here next week. See you next week. Later, Jer. We're here. We're still here. We are still here.